The basic science zone has, as we all know, made stunning advances in the last 50 years. It's possibly the greatest cultural accomplishment of our society since World War II. Uh, our hospitals used to be about acute uh, conditions and um, our hospitals increasingly uh, are being used by people with long-term chronic conditions. The, the healthcare system we have now is not sustainable. It will never be sustainable. I'd like you to understand that systems medicine and P4 medicine, which I'll explain, are fundamentally different from how we practice medicine today. Rather than waiting for you to get that breast cancer and then trying to get you the right drug at the right time, we could actually prevent you from getting the breast cancer in the first place, which I think most people would agree would be the better option. This is a conference with a purpose. Uh, we want this conference to be a catalyst uh, to moving BC to becoming uh, the personalized uh, medicine uh, province and we've really assembled an all-star uh, faculty to tell us of the latest advances in, uh, in personalized molecularly based medicine. So P4 medicine is proactive, not reactive. It is all about focusing on individuals and not on populations. It's a major focus on wellness, which has been virtually ignored by the current healthcare system. Uh, what more can we do to ensure that a healthcare system isn't just a patch and repair system? Talking about moving from a pretty fragmented structure of healthcare, uh, even within British Columbia, uh, to one which is quite transformative, uh, personalized, wrapped around the patient, individualized as opposed to being dependent upon generic diagnoses and generic therapies. And then incorporating our omic data, so the genomic, the proteomic, the metabolomic and all the rest, around individuals to try to help us understand better about how the biology of an individual matches up with how they respond to therapy and what the outcomes are. Molecular U is using that expertise to assess health of an individual at different molecular levels and also incorporating um, geographical, social, behavioral aspects in that. And by looking at the individual from so many different angles, you get the complete picture and the level of understanding you can reach of health and disease with this kind of approach is enormous. Having a treatment now that is optimized and personalized uh, to fit the needs of the individual, uh, and in doing so, we have been able to show that we can virtually eliminate AIDS, we can virtually eliminate mortality related to AIDS, and we are virtually on our way to eliminate HIV transmission. Adverse drug reaction is a huge problem. It's the leading uh, cause of morbidity, mortality in hospital uh, in uh, Canada and, and the U.S. Uh, there are patients that are administered drugs every day that can cause adverse events and those adverse events can be lethal in some cases and we have an opportunity with personalized medicine to get ahead of that kind of problem. It's the convergence of three things as I see it. One is systems medicine. What the Genome Project gave us from the point of view of systems thinking was a complete parts list of genes and by inference proteins. So for the first time we could start thinking about systems uh, approaches to human biology. Two, it's the emergence of big data and its analytics. Back in 1992, the cost of storage was $569 per gigabyte of storage. Today, that's three cents. Together with the uh, digital measurement of personalized data. Yeah, Apple did an amazing thing for health not that long ago, and, and we worked with them on this, is they, they developed something called Research Kit, which turns all one billion iOS devices in the world into clinical trial devices. It's unbelievable. And three, it's the advent of consumer-oriented social networks. So what's gonna happen is that now we're becoming empowered by this device to communicate in ways and have information that potentially is more current than what our clinician has. And we predict that we're going to be able to identify a genetic or microbiomic signature, if you will, for each of these clusters of patients. And that's going to be the first step towards a personalized medicine for autism patients. The evidence is there for the use of, of genetics, whether it's in diagnostic testing or whether it's in pharmacogenetics. And it does save lives, so let's be honest, if, if we wait five or ten years, then um, we will have cost some people in BC uh, their health. Pretty soon the public's going to start asking, why do 2% of births have you know, serious, serious, serious problems, things that cost uh, the taxpayers a lot? when it's, entire, it's information that is entirely knowable. 
if the average age of conception is 28 years, that information existed for 28 years and was never acted on. At Vanderbilt, 10 years ago, the only genetic testing that was being done was in the pediatric genetics clinic. And now we send out $12 million a year, and it's growing by about 30% a year. So it's organic. It's happening. The personalized approach to medicine is inevitable. Uh, the only question is uh, whether we in BC are going to be followers uh, as opposed to being among the leaders. This is actually an opportunity for cost saving in the healthcare system. We can mitigate costs, we can avoid costs um, for the betterment of, of everybody, particularly in our one payer system, of course the taxpayer. First and foremost, what personalized medicine will do is it will improve patient outcomes. We converted seven pre-diabetics to perfectly normal individuals. Many of them feel it transformed their life for the first time they had control of their own health. We believe that we can actually take an exemplar, an example or two from each one of those boxes from cancer, rare disease, infectious disease and pharmacogenomics and actually move that into our, our single payer healthcare system and have it accessible to all British Columbians within the next five years. All of these tools allow us to uh, um, think of a future where we can use optimized personalized medicine uh, to aim for targeted disease elimination that will be cost effective and possibly cost averting in a way that will seriously contribute to healthcare sustainability. I think this has been a stunning uh, symposium and really at the cutting edge around the world of what so many of us are trying to do uh, in relation to developing personalized medicine. And there's no question this is the start of something quite exciting, I think, in this province. Healthcare is changing dramatically and it's about to change even more dramatically. In order to reduce healthcare spending, uh, to create new jobs and new companies and save lives, personalized medicine is the way of the future. BC has a unique opportunity to become the personalized medicine jurisdiction and to become a global leader.